what can you tell us about jumping on the flash very daunting uh it's the first time i've been given given a, a character of that sort of stature that that I mean, I, I don't want to jinx it by saying it'll definitely go past six issues, but, you know, unless I really, really fuck it up, which is not not impossible, it'll probably go past six issues. So um, you do automatically have to find new strategies for telling those stories. Years ago, when I was first writing uh, X-Men Legacy, my, my then editor, Daniel Ketchum, who's a wonderful guy, he used to have this term for, for a thing called Claremonting, which is where you just deliberately throw in stuff that may or may not become important. And you don't necessarily have to know whether it's important or not. It's just when I need it, I've got a plot over there. When I need it, I've got a plot over there. So right. to an extent, I'm doing that. I do know where all these things go for a change, but it's it's a question of how much runway we get to, to tell all these different stories. And the, the big challenge, this is the first time I've talked about this in an interview, so I'm I'm not quite as, as sort of organized mentally as I normally am about these things. But it, it's um, I don't know if you read the the previous run, Jeremy's run. It's really really good. It's like as as polished and wonderfully characterful as a classic um, speculative sciencey superhero tale can be. You know it it. It doesn't break the mold because it doesn't need to. It's just really, really good, solid superhero stuff. And inevitably, when when they bring me in and they're like, hey, Cy, what would you do if you could do anything with a flash? And I'm like, horror it needs to be psychedelic horror because, of course, it does. You've got this guy, uh, in fact, a whole bunch of them who dip into this mysterious force that they don't really understand anything about, which gives them these powers, which allows them to transcend reality and occasionally break the the light barrier and it, it's just perfectly set up for spooky psychedelic shenanigans as people tear down the veil and see what strange things reality holds that you you have no suspicion of expecting them to come back and say that sounds great that's a black label book isn't it so we're going to go with <laughs> the other thing and instead they say yeah we want to do this um, and I think, I mean, I haven't had this conversation, so I'm speculating. My guess is when you've got, like Jeremy's run was, I think, 36 issues, so three years. That's incredible in, in today's world. You've got the movie coming out. I guess someone somewhere thought to themselves, if we're not going to shake it up now, whenever will we? Do you know what I mean? The, the time yeah. is right. But it's it's daunting because the fans are rightly very fond of the, um, the the sort of family web of relationships that became so important in Jeremy's run. The fact that Wally West, the central character, has all these sort of loved uh, friends and family and kids and his wife and all of his other sort of Flash family stuff. You know, it's it's called the, the Flash family for a reason. It's a family book. And if I come along and I'm just like, nah, fuck all that stuff. We're going to tell spooky tales about this guy rupturing the reality barrier and delving into strange planes of existence, then they will rightly be a bit fed up. So it's been about finding clever ways to sort of do both, to have the cake and eat it, to keep the focus on Wally as a, an interesting human and therefore a human who exists in a network of, of interpersonal relationships while also gradually tightening the screws on this sort of mysterious stuff that's going on in the in the, the sort of periphery of his world so we don't jump straight into uh, a kind of spooky ooky vibe we kind of get there bit by bit with letting it like the, with the tentacle is the obvious thing, you know, it's the fucking Lovecraftian nonsense and cliches. And we're trying very hard to stay away from tentacles for that result, for that reason. But to use the language of the tentacle, it's the tentacles creeping in and wrapping themselves around everything before you even notice. So that by the time you realize something's going a bit wrong, it's too late. All the same, like we come in in the middle of a superhero fight with Gorilla Grodd, you know, it's that, that's the sort of, we're hitting the, the big, 
fun, bold beats while gradually increasing the shadows that are falling across things. Again, I'm waffling, but yeah, that's there's a lot to talk about with the flash, and I haven't quite finished processing it because I'm still still sort of finding my feet. I'm writing issue four at the moment, and um I think I've got Wally's voice. I'm finding the other voices as I go, but this is the difference between the the mini series and the ongoing is that you can take your time. You can sort of say, you know what, my outline had this happening here, but I think it's more important that we spend a bit of time with that character. So let's do that instead. And that's quite nice. That's an unusual luxury for me up until the point that my editor calls me and say, you know what, we need to wrap it up, go. <laughs> and that's when the headaches start. But yeah, for now, yeah. it's a lot of fun.